Yo, what is going on guys? Back with another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about some crazy trippy effects you can use in your video projects, your music videos, however you want to use it. You may recognize this effect from some popular music videos. Cole Bennett has used it a lot. It's been in one Lil Uzi music video, I'm pretty sure. A lot of other music videos, I've seen this everywhere. I'm going to show you how to do that bulging eye effect as well as I'm going to add on to that. I'm going to show you how to do some crazy other stuff, which you just saw in the first few clips of this video. So I have used this in my music videos before. I'll throw some clips up on the screen right now just so you guys can see. So this is something that I'm very familiar with. There's a few ways you can actually do this. There's some ways using keyframes, some ways using motion tracking. I'm going to show you by far, in my opinion, the easiest way to do this and the fastest way to do this. So let's first bring our footage into After Effects. If you guys are one of my viewers who only uses Premiere, I highly, highly recommend you guys get After Effects and work through dynamic links. I know I was reluctant to learn After Effects at first, but if you guys just use tutorials and follow along, it's so easy to learn if you're just going step by step. Very first step that we are going to do, go ahead and click on your footage right here in the timeline. Click Control C, Control V. That is going to duplicate your clip. Now what we can do is click on our duplicated clip, come over here to our toolbar and you'll see the ellipse tool right here. If you're seeing a square right here, just alt click this until you find the circle. This is how you actually cycle through all the different tools. Okay, so we have our ellipse tool selected right here. What we're going to do is just hold down control alt and use the mouse wheel just to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to draw a circle around his face just like this. Just make sure all the subjects facial features are inside of the circle and that nothing is being cut out. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to motion track this. And this is actually very simple. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to come over here to this tracker tab right here. We're going to click on this drop down arrow where it says method and we're going to select face tracking detailed features. So click on that and then all we have to do here is just click play. And what the computer is going to do now is it's going to analyze the features. You'll see it'll switch right here. And it's going to create different tracker points for the eyes, the pupils, the mouth, the cheekbone, the nose. And this is so, so useful in After Effects because you won't have to do any masking. The computer is doing it all for you. It's track masking it and you're going to get all the information for all the pivot points that we want to connect to. So like I said, very easy. There's not a lot of grunt work involved in this. It's really just using some, some cool techniques that are built into After Effects to create this really cool effect. Okay, so the computer has gone in and actually made all those keyframes for us, done all the masking for us, all the tracking. As you see right here, this is the keyframes that it has created. If I actually open this up, you can actually see all of the different things it's created for each of these face track points. So if you open it up here, you'll see that it has the left eye, right eye, nose, mouth, cheeks, and chin keyframes all created for you. You don't have to do the masking you don't have to do the keyframing and it's all perfect that is why after effects is such a useful thing to have and that is why i highly recommend that you guys get after effects if you do want to step up your game and create things like this all right so next up it's actually very simple how we're going to create this bulging eye effect all we have to do is come over here to our effects and presets library and we're going to look up bulge so I'm actually going to go ahead and just close all these little tabs just so we can see everything. I'm going to take this bulge effect and I'm going to drag that onto my top duplicated clip, which I did all the masking and motion tracking onto just like this. And now what we can see is we created an area where we can create a bulge effect. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to connect this bulge effect to the motion tracking information that we just went through and did. So this is how we're going to do with that with just a few clicks. What we're going to do is come over here to our effect controls and then right here where it says our bulge effect. All you need to do is find where it says bulge center right here. You'll see this animation keyframe button. What we're going to do is hold down alt on our keyboard and just click on that animation keyframe button. So you're going to see these turn red and then if you come down here in our and then if you come down here in our layers you're going to see that this little menu pops up this expression thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this pick whip right here and we're going to connect this layer into the tracking information that we did before. So what this is doing it's connecting the center of the bulge effect to the motion tracking that we did. So let's go back up and let's find our face track points. Let's open up left eye and you see all these right here. So I'm going to go back down. I'm going to grab my pick whip for the bulge and I'm just going to drag that all the way up into the left pupil. You can really put this on any part of the eye that you like to, but I usually just put it on the left pupil or the pupil of whatever eye I'm using. So now we picked with this to the pupil. And if you see, I come up here to bulge and actually change any of these, you're going to see that it changes on the eyeball. And if I move a little bit, you're going to see that the bulge moves with it. So this is something that's super useful. I hope that tip helped you because it's pretty hard to actually figure out how to do this. In my opinion, I had to search for a while is we can just go into the effect controls and just change the bulge to however we want it, change any of the settings to get a look that we like. So really just mess around with this until you get the desired look that you want. Make sure you taper the radius if it's looking a little bit too 
unrealistic and you're seeing those edges come out. So just taper the radius just like that. And we've got a nice bulged effect looking right here. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take another bulge effect and we're going to drag that back onto our clip. So take the bulge effect, drag that onto your clip, and we're going to do the same steps except we're going to pick whip this one onto the other eye. So we're actually going to open up face track points again. We're going to close the left eye options and we're going to open up the right eye options. Now what we can do is slide all the way down here to where it says bulge 2. We can actually go back up to our effect controls for bulge 2 and where it says bulge center we're going to do the same steps. We're going to hold down alt on our keyboard and click on this keyframe animation for bulge center. That's going to open this pick whip menu up. We're going to take our pick whip. We're going to drag up a little bit and we're just going to drag it onto the right pupil. And now as you see, if I change around any of the settings for my bulge too, it's going to be on the right eye. And if I move around, that is all pick whip. So that moves with the motion tracking that we did. And now just to keep this accurate, we can actually copy the settings of the right eye bulge from the left eye bulge. So we can just copy our horizontal radius and vertical radius, the numbers that we've got right above. And that's looking great. So let me just slide around and show you what I got. Very easy motion tracking, very easy to apply that bulge. And I'm pretty sure this is the fastest and easiest way to do this. So don't waste your time keyframing. Don't waste your time trying to mess around with the offset or creating second effects. It can be done so fast with just that face tracking method and then by pick whipping the bulge effect to that. So I hope that all made sense. If I went a little bit too fast, just rewind the video a little bit and watch some of the steps that I did. Like I said, once you get the hang of it, it's very, very simple. All right, so now we successfully pulled off that motion tracking of the bulging eyes. We've got that effect all done. Now I'm going to show you something different using a different little distortion tool. And this one's also very interesting and not a lot of people use this. So I think that it's worth talking about. So what we're going to do is go back to our effects and presets. We can actually close all these settings just so we don't get confused. We're going to look up in the effects and presets library, we're going to look up liquify. It's under here in distort. Take that and drag that onto your bottom clip, not your top clip. So take that, put it on your bottom clip. And now what we can do is we have all these cool little distortion tools that we can apply to our clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe it so that his bandana kind of meshes and warps up into some cool looking like horn effect. So to do that, I'm going to click on the very first tool, this pointer finger. This is called the warp tool. And I can actually open up these warp tool options and I'm going to make brush pressure around 100. And I'm also going to make brush size around 90. So you can change that around depending on your clip. Just make sure that the brush pressure is enough to actually drag what you want as far as you want. And the brush size is enough where you're getting the look that you'd like. So if that clicks off, you just have to click on the tool again. And then I'm going to go ahead and select where I would like the effect to happen. So right about here, I'm going to take and I'm just going to drag in this kind of like horn like pattern. And it's looking really cool with this cool like liquify effect. And this actually isn't motion track. So if I go along here, you're going to see that this actually messes up. So what we can do to actually fix that is we can just make a simple little keyframe so that it animates starting like nothing, grows out and then goes back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this distortion percentage keyframe right here. Just click that and we already have our starting position. So I'm just gonna go back to the very beginning and I'm going to make this percentage zero. So what I just did is I made an animation by clicking this button where if I drag along, as you're gonna see, his, this is gonna slowly start to animate and you're gonna see these start poking out and the horns start being made at this position right here. Then if I drag along and it starts getting messed up a little bit too much, I can just make this zero again and you're gonna see that it goes from 100% all the way back down to zero just like that and that is how you create that cool little warping effect you guys can mess around with any of these other effects the twirl tool options turbulence tool shift bloat bunch of cool distortion trippy stuff in this liquify tool um, it's all built into after effects no plugins needed hope you guys enjoyed this video leave a like comment and subscribe let me know what you'd like to see next in the comment section down below anyways guys thank you for watching this video and i'll see you guys later